Hey guys, Mikey Swartz here. You're watching the Tundra series on the Whip Bass channel. We're right in the middle of mounting up Tundra's 5.7 liter V8 in this 2005 Tacoma. In recent previous episodes, we decided to slide the entire cab back about four inches and take the engine and transmission with it. That's gonna put more weight on the back tires. I wanna keep all the weight as low as possible for a low center of gravity, but we also want high clearance at the center of the truck. So I'm trying to keep that transfer case up out of the way. You know, when you buy these Tacomas from the factory or the Tundras, those transfer cases always hang down. That's just how most trucks are. On this one, we got that sucker tucked up in between the frame rails. If you look under a stock Tacoma or any four wheel drive truck, you're gonna see the transfer case hangs down below those frame rails and then it'll just have a skid plate on it or whatever. And even a two wheel drive truck will have a cross member that hangs way down to mount the transmission. I wanted to make sure to have a clean shot from frame rail to frame rail with nothing hanging down so I can put a big flat skid plate underneath this thing like a side by side would have. In the very last episode, we actually notched the upper oil pan so this whole engine can drop down in next to the front differential. We also moved the oil filter and oil cooler housing that was definitely gonna hit the power steering rack. And I didn't film all this because it would have got boring, but I spent a couple hours lifting this body up and down, moving this engine around just slightly to get it in the exact spot where I want it. Right now, I have it slid back to the point where it's just about impossible to go any further. This is the power steering pump. This is where the pressure line bolts onto it. And it's literally getting just a little too close for comfort at the shock tower, which could be notched, but I'm not gonna go that far because this engine's right about where I want it now. But that was my limiting factor on sliding it back. So I decided to stop there. In relation to the steering rack, the pulleys are just sticking out past that steering rack a little bit. It actually slid back a lot further than I expected it to. And there's a reason for that. When I originally just dropped the engine in before we pulled the cab, the engine was sitting down at an angle like this a little too much. Now that we have the whole transmission and transfer case on there, we got that lifted up, tilted everything forward, which allowed the whole engine to slide back further because it's keeping it away from the firewall at the top. Also, since we notched that upper oil pan, dropped the engine down in a little deeper, now we're gonna clear the heater and AC lines that we're gonna hit right here. So I am feeling really confident that this is the spot. I know part of this process, we've been talking about which mounts we're gonna use, Tacoma or Tundra, and I've been tossing around the idea of using either or, but I've decided to use neither. I'm just gonna make solid brackets and bolt this engine in with no mounts. Now for you guys that are wanting to do this swap yourselves, I wouldn't recommend that, but this isn't gonna really be a daily driver for me. So if it rattles and shakes the truck a little bit, I'll be okay with that. I just don't wanna risk the rubber mounts letting this thing move too much and bumping the oil pan or something like that because everything's gonna be really tight. I really got it dropped down as low as I can get it and as far back as I can get it. And there's a lot of tight tolerances, so I don't really want a lot of movement out of it. So that's why I made that decision. But for anyone that's trying to do the swap on your own, I would recommend the Tacoma mounts mainly because of the steering shaft. The Tacoma mounts are gonna clear that intermediate steering shaft much better than the Tundra mounts. The Tundra mounts are a lot bigger at the top. And I'll show you the difference here. If you've been keeping up with the swap, I'm sure you've seen this, but hey, this is the Tundra mounts and this is the Tacoma mount. So you can see there's a lot less meat up here for that to hit. Um, once these go in there in place, this is actually already notched out for the steering shaft. If you were to cut the brackets off the Tundra, they're not notched out for that steering shaft because it wasn't an issue for the Tundra. But here's what I'm talking about right here. I left this kind of bolted into place down here so, so I could play around with it and see where it's gonna have to sit. For me, it's probably gonna come up right about at this angle. And I don't know if you can tell, but right there's where the mount has to bolt in. I know there's no way I could have put the Tundra mounts on this one, not on this side anyway. On the passenger side, there's plenty of room but not over here. So let's get right down to business and make some mount brackets. I know it might sound crazy to not have mounts, but I've done it many times in Hondas, like for drag racing and stuff like that. It takes away the wheel hop. The engine can't move around. That's in a front wheel drive configuration. In this truck, that probably won't be as big of a deal, but a rear wheel drive engine is gonna wanna twist when you're on and off the throttle. With solid mounts, it won't be able to do that. It's gonna be in there tight. I'm gonna actually take the same approach that I used when I put the S2000 engine in the drift truck. I just made brackets and literally bolted bracket to bracket, no mount in between. 
However, on this truck, I'm a lot more worried about strength and structure, so I'm gonna use some thick metal. So I ran down to my dealership, to the shop there. I have a scrap pile of metal down there with like plate and bed frames and stuff like that. So I raided that, basically just looking for some quarter inch steel plate. But I found something even better and I decided I'm gonna use this. And you know I'm all about recycling. This is a lift arm from an old rotary lift. I don't have the rest of this lift. I don't even know how I ended up with this thing, but as you can see, it is really thick. It's a, uh, eh, I'm not gonna measure. It's at least quarter inch thick. It's boxed, but it's not boxed the entire way around. And that's actually perfect for what I need. So let me show you what I got in mind. This measures three inches thick and five inches tall. This is gonna be pretty perfect for what I wanna do. Okay, I got her all drawn on there how I want it. I'm only gonna have to use this much because I'm gonna split the difference here. This will be for the passenger side. This one will be for the driver's side because when you flip this, I'm gonna notch this all out. So the driver's side, one side's only gonna be that big. Uh, but for the passenger side, both sides are gonna be fully boxed. Driver's side can't be fully boxed because I need to notch it out for that intermediate steering shaft anyway. So I'm just gonna use this piece for driver's side. There's the passenger side, done. On to the driver's side. Just out of curiosity, what are those two little relief cuts you made in each one of them? Oh, those little relief cuts there that I made. You see, I didn't explain that yet, but the way those mounting brackets are in there, they're at a slight angle down on each side. These are gonna stick straight out from the frame, so I had to cut them so I can bend them down then. Does that make sense, kids? Fair? <laughs> so this will be our passenger side. It's a complete piece. And this is for the driver's side. And it's got this notched out because of that intermediate steering shaft coming up through there. Fucker's hot. I'm gonna gusset these after they're on there too. Don't worry, they'll be strong. Something I refuse to do is drill holes through quarter inch plate. That's just stupid. I cut holes out with a plasma cutter and then I'll just weld some washers onto each side to make a nice perfect hole. Got it all planned out. Sure beats drilling. Not bad. So we got our basic mounts now. Passenger side, driver's side. I'm gonna try to film this as best I can. I'm on the passenger side now. Here's my mount. And I'm just gonna slide it in there. You can see how I had to bend that down just a little. See how the holes are lined up. For hardware, I went to Surplus City. I don't know if there's a Surplus City everywhere. I feel like there is, or something similar. But anyway, I went to Surplus City. I picked up some 9 16th bolts and they fit right in those same holes. I think they were 14 millimeter, but they didn't have a good selection of metrics. So nine sixteenths bolts and they have weld washers. At least that's what I call them. These are washers with no zinc coating or anything like that. So you can weld these. Well, they do have like oil on them so they don't rust. You gotta wipe that off first, but then you can weld these real nice. So I'm gonna weld some of these washers to the top of that mount. I knew that was gonna happen anyway. The mounts were gonna sit a little low. Uh, so I'm gonna weld a couple of these to bring it up exactly where it has to be so it can sit flush with the top of the frame. Okay, so I got one washer underneath. I got my 9 16 bolt up through. Five washers stacked on top. It's a little more than I expected, but I think that's what it's gonna take, about four or five. I'm gonna try five right now and stick this in here and see how it fits. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but I got her tucked in there. It's working out pretty good for me, actually. Except for the filming aspect, it's kind of tough, but I'm gonna put a nut up here. And I'm gonna try the other side and make sure it's gonna work with five washers as well. Kind of just double check and make sure everything still looks straight before I start to weld anything. You can see into the driver's side a lot better. So let me show you this side. Five washers stacked on top. I got one underneath. This is gonna sit up flush with the top of the frame. Oh, about like that. There we go. About like yay. Uh, pretty approximate right now, but it's actually fitting really good. Now down below you can see the steering shaft lay in there. That's going to still get pretty close to the mount right here. 
Okay, so I'm gonna notch that out a little more just to make sure that there's plenty of room for this thing to turn. And if I ever have to change it, which I'm sure I will sooner or later, these things go bad. So um, I'll be able to pull it on and off of there, you know, so I need to have plenty of room for that. You know, I don't wanna compromise the mount too much, but I am gonna notch it a little bit. This is going really smooth so far. Too smooth right now, too smooth. Something's gotta be wrong. I'm pretty happy. Oh shit, I'm pretty happy, it sounds dumb. I'm pretty stoked on how quick this is going, how easy this has turned out, so I can get on with the next step. That's gonna be the transmission mount. But I'm gonna call it a night because it's steak night at the Market Cross Pub. On the next episode, we'll be lighting stuff on fire, getting a little bit wet, and making a solid mount for the transmission. Please hit that like button, leave me some comments, and make sure you subscribe to Whip Bash.